Good morning, everyone. I am excited to welcome you all to the downtown Ward 7, uh, also known as Minnesota Avenue here uh, on Minnesota Avenue. Uh, my name is Tyrell Holcomb, and I have the honor of serving as chairperson of ANC 7F, as well as the single member district representative for 7F01. Uh, Ward 7, lifelong resident, four generations deep. Uh, as I shared, when this building broke ground two years ago, we were excited about the opportunity that it presented for our community, uh, what it means for the future uh, of our community, uh, and all that it will bring to our community. Uh, echoing the words of the late President John F. Kennedy for one true measure of a nation is its success in fulfilling the promise of a better life for each of its members. Let this be the measure of success of our nation. And my hope is that this will be the measure of success for our city and this, the Great Ward 7. And so we'd like to say thank you to all of those who had a hand in this project from each aspect uh, of going into the ground, coming out of the ground, what it's meant for our community, what it's meant for our business community here along the Minnesota Avenue downtown Ward 7, and what it's going to mean for the future uh, as we move forward for a bright and better Ward 7 that is to come. And so with that, I'd like to introduce uh, our illustrious mayor, uh, third term mayor, Mayor Muriel Bowser. Well, hello, Ward 7. Thank you, Commissioner Holcomb. He seems like he's happy, but I am excited. And it's great to be here in Ward 7 uh, with everyone gathered to celebrate this beautiful investment, development, and progress. I am so thrilled uh, to be able to deliver this project as we promised so that more DC government can be closer to the people. You may remember that back in 2019, uh, I signed a mayor's order directing our office of the deputy mayor for planning and economic development and the Department of General Services to begin identifying sites in Ward 7 and 8 where we could relocate DC government agencies. And the reason I did that is because I understand clearly how powerful the district's leasing power is for spurring economic development. In fact, we know uh, that the previous home of DGS at the Reeves Center was one of the original driving forces uh, that transformed U Street at the direction of Mayor Marion Barry. So in 2021, uh, DG, DGS uh, entered into a 20-year lease at this location. So I want to give a big hand to Deputy Mayor Keith Anderson. And Keith started uh, this project as the director of DGS. And I want to thank him for his diligence in seeking out economic opportunities for DC businesses and residents. His team brought every resource to the table for this project, including a DC government lease, tax increment financing, and it's also located in an opportunity zone. So when you hear me talking about economic development tools in my toolbox, we used a good number of those tools to bring this project to fruition. I also want, uh, want to announce today um, that Director Faust, I'm not sure if he's here, but he is the director of our Department of Corrections, um, and their office are currently at the Reeves Center, uh, and they will also be moving to this building. Uh, and so normally at ribbon cutting, cuttings and groundbreakings, it's DGS who is providing and delivering a building for its client agencies. And today, DGS is the delivering a building to DGS. <laughs> so let's give them a big round of applause. I also want to acknowledge uh, the development teams involved, Aslan Capital Partners, Trammell Crow and Goldman Sachs, 
who together uh, built and will manage uh, this new headquarters. Uh, but today uh, we're going to talk a little bit more than about the building. Uh, we are also announcing $3 million in Great Street grants to 50 businesses across D.C. And it's fitting that we're here on the Minnesota Benning Great Streets Corridor because this year's awardees made Great Streets history with the largest cohort of Ward 7 grantees. So please join me in recognizing Best Nails, Justina's, Penway Market, Nashra LLC, E-Market, Global Government and Industry Partners, and Powell Manufacturing Inc. I think there's some people who are excited about that. And later this month, uh, we will announce a second round of applications for small and medium business um, businesses for our growth fund. And in that round, we will have a, an additional $2 million in applications. It will open on June the 23rd and close the week of July 21st. So please get ready um, for that um, offering. You can go to obviouslydc.com in the coming weeks to learn more. And finally, uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, leadership and two fantastic people that I have the opportunity uh, to award uh, a, a leadership post to. Uh, we are, of course, very focused on having the best team members and leaders in D.C. government, and I'm always happy when people raise their hands to serve. Um, so I'm proud today to announce that Richard Livingstone will be the next director of the mayor's office. Stand up, Richard, of the mayor's office on community relations and services. Some people are excited, Richard. Uh, and that, of course, um, if, if you didn't catch the acronym and what I just said, that's my, uh, my MOKERS office. And the MOKERS, we have representatives in every ward who are the mayor's representatives. So when you see them, you see me. Uh, and their job is to make sure that you ANC commissioners and community members and businesses have exactly what they need from the government. Uh, Richard started uh, during my first term as the Ward 2 liaison or the Ward 2 MOKERS. Uh, and he has served in a number of roles, including as Deputy Chief of Staff at the Department of Housing and Community community development and he is always up for a challenge and I am so proud that he will be leading the hardest working team in DC government the mokers I am also proud to announce today that Charles Hall Jr. will serve as the next director of the Department of Human Resources Charles please stand up Director Hall comes to us from Baltimore, where he has served in a number of human resources positions over the last 15 years, including nine years at the Baltimore Public Schools. Uh, he most recently served as Assistant Vice President of Human Resources and Payroll at the Baltimore City Community College, a cabinet-level role with oversight of personnel matters, federal, state, and employment, federal and state employment laws, and employee relations. So I wanted to welcome him as a new member of my cabinet. Welcome. And I also want to thank Lindsay Maxwell, who's had to have two jobs, uh, for stepping up and also providing leadership to the Office of Human Resources. Uh, and so with that, we're going to turn to the, the matter uh, at hand uh, and stay very focused on the, the new investment here in Ward 7. Uh, so we're going to turn now to Deputy Mayor Keith Anderson, and then we'll hear from the new director of DGS, Delano Hunter. Keith. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and good morning, Ward 7. Good morning. 
and congratulations to DGS and DOC for the beautiful new headquarters. Give yourselves a round of applause. I must say, it's great to be here and in many ways back here at DGS. Now, you know, this is not the first ribbon cutting uh, of a former agency I led that I've attended. Nor is this the first time Delano has moved into said building. <laughs> that aside, <laughs> that aside, today is a great day for economic development uh, in Ward 7. We know the power uh, that government has in locating its sizable workforce in intentional places. That's why in 2019, Mayor Bowser signed a mayor's order directing this group, DEMPED and DGS, uh, to first identify potential uh, relocation properties in Ward 7 and 8, uh, considering offices, office spaces uh, for available district agencies. What we now call this, we now call this the East of the River Leasing Strategy. In addition to DGS and DOC locating here, uh, we've got new headquarters for the D.C. Health and the Department of Health and Community De uh, Development coming as well east of the river. That's right. It's also why one of the key pillars of, the D of D.C.'s five-year economic development strategy called the Comeback Plan is opportunity-rich neighborhoods. This new building brings hundreds of people to this neighborhood every day. And I can tell you every day, because that's how much DGS works, every day. And, and while they're here, as all res, uh, Ward 7 residents want, they need successful businesses, the second tier of the comeback plan, which is why I'm so excited the mayor announced the over $3 million in Great Streets funding uh, for nearly 50 businesses. And, and don't forget what she said. The largest cohort of Ward 7 grantees we've ever had in one year. That also deserves a round of applause. Now, since Great Streets has launched in 2015, it's invested over $30 million in district businesses. And there's more where these investments came from. Another pillar of the comeback plan is thriving people. Mayor Bowser announced the upcoming round of small and medium growth fund opening on June 23rd, and we've got more announcements like this coming this summer and into the new fiscal year. We encourage anyone interested in participating uh, in the district's comeback plan to view these and other opportunities at obviouslydc.com. Now it is my pleasure to introduce the, the Department of General Services Acting Director, Delano Hunter. All right, good morning. Give yourselves a round of applause. And thank you for being here. Let's give it up for the hardworking men and women of the DC Department of General Services. Make some noise if you're out there. So good morning once again. My name is Delano Hunter and I'm proud to serve as the acting director of the DC Department of General Services. Uh, and I want to give a special thank you uh, to Deputy Mayor Anderson. This is the second time he alluded to this. I've had the opportunity to occupy a new office space that he helped to construct and build. So thank you so much. Appreciate you greasing the path. And I, of course, want to thank Mayor Bowser. Let's give her a round of applause. This is truly monumental. We know the power of economic development and how it can help to transform and uplift the community. Look no further than the Reeves Center. Look no further than the old MCI Center. I think you all remember when it went by that back in the day. It has an opportunity to uplift the community, and we are excited to be the very first agency since Mayor Bowser signed her mayoral order uh, to move east of the river, but we certainly won't be the last. So now I want to tell you just a little more about this facility. It's over 239,000 square feet, six stories. It has a state-of-the-art commercial kitchen. Also, there's flex space, hoteling space, and a number of amenities, not just for DGS, uh, but also for other agencies and stakeholders to take advantage of. And we also are pleased to share this space with the D.C. Department of Corrections that will move in in just a few weeks at the end of June. So we didn't get here alone. 
This was certainly a robust partnership, and there are a number of folks that I want to thank. First, I'd like to start off by thanking the Ward 7 Council Member Vincent Gray in his absence. Oh. I apologize. I'll say it again. Let's thank Council Member Gray in his presence. All right. <laughs> ANC 7 F01 Commissioner Tyrell Holcomb, thank you for your advocacy and support. And we also want to thank uh, uh, many of our partners who you hear from, from Ashland Capital to the Goldman Sachs Group to Tremel Crow. Uh, to Gilbane Construction, Perkins, Eastman, Moya Designs, and JLLJDC. Uh, so I cannot forget to thank the DGS project team that led us here. So I want you to raise your hand. Please give a hand for Rashad Jenkins, <laughs> Mohammed Jallo, Tawana Hicks, and so many others that work with our development partners to make sure that this went smoothly. Uh, so we're excited to be a part of the Northeast Heights community. We're excited to be a part of Ward 7. Uh, the Benin Road Corridor is near and dear to my heart for a number of reasons, so it's happy to be back to a second home for me. All right, so with that being said, I now want to welcome uh, the uh, Ashland Capital Partners CEO and founding partner, and that's Mr. James Simmons. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Um, you know, when I look around the crowd today, a couple of words come to mind. Um, I'm going to thank a couple of, of groups that weren't recognized, um, our terrorists, DRA advisors. Um, building something as magnificent as this takes um, a team, a village, a number of hands. Um, and none of it could have, could have gotten done without each and every part of the puzzle. Um, the first word that comes to mind is, is purposeful. And the mayor was purposeful when she wrote that order for this building to be located here. And just think about prior to then why there wasn't purpose put behind Ward 7 and Ward 8. That's true of many communities. I happen to live in Harlem, New York, very similar to Ward 7, Ward 8. And we, for too many years, are starved for capital, starved for investment. And so I thank everyone for entrusting our firm as one that can bring this to, to, uh, to life. The second is partnership. Um, there was a deep partnership between my firm, Trammell Crow, Gilbane, Goldman Sachs. You can't build something like this without deep trust in your partners because everyone has to play their individual role. Um, we were joking earlier about the negotiations to get this deal closed <laughs> and how many parties we had at the table. But that means that everyone has to compromise and everyone has to see the bigger good. Professionals and professionalism. I have to say, I've been doing this for a long time and I've worked in many different domiciles, but the professionals at DGS topped them all. The work. The work that went into taking this for what it was to what it is um, and the incremental hurdles that you have to make, um, the progress, um, I think it was truly remarkable. Um, so you guys deserve um, my kudos. Um, and then lastly, I want to say power. Too often um, women get overlooked. And your, your mayor, um, your, your mayor, and, and my mother happens to be here today, somewhere out there, um, who, who, who worked um, her entire career at a state office building. And I want to tell you, this is not a government office building. 
this is a class A office building where you would find any corporate headquarters would be happy to call this home. But that emanated from the power of the women who were behind some of the ideas that came to make this happen. So with that, I say, Mayor, thank you very much. Well, thank you, and we look forward to seeing this Class A property for our Class A employees. Uh, and I also want to, to make a couple of acknowledgments, and um, I'll turn to other members of the team. I first want to acknowledge um, that the city administrator for the district has joined us. Kevin Donahue's here. I see Unique Morris Hughes, uh, our director of DOES, and she, her office space is just down the street. Uh, as, as well, we have been joined by the Ward 4 Council Member, uh, Council Member Lewis George. Thank you for being here. And I want to acknowledge now for his comments the Ward 7 Council Member, Mayor Vincent Gray. Thank you very much, Sheila. Thank you very much. Thank, thanks, everybody, for uh, giving me the opportunity to do this now. I'm glad to, glad to be able to be part of this wonderful, wonderful day. Of, it's just a wonderful opportunity uh, to be here uh, on this absolutely beautiful day here in the District of Columbia. Uh, I want to thank everyone uh, for being in attendance. Uh, and for all that you did, you've done uh, to be able to get us to where we are today. And thank you for making us proud uh, to be a part of the, um, the accomplishments that have brought us all together today to make this happen. The, the new DGS headquarters is a, is a catalyst for economic uh, development uh, and the transformation of a, of a of a huge uh, additional opportunity making happen uh, as we see this work uh, all going on uh, all day every day. Uh, we, we're here to uh, be a part of the 500 uh, DGS employees uh, will welcome, uh, will help us uh, to come together and to uh, maintain all of this uh, work that's going to make this make this an absolute wonderful opportunity for everybody here uh, in the District of Columbia. Uh, beyond uh, beyond uh, here here uh, beyond here, uh, the the important work that's being done. Uh, that's being done throughout the uh, this ward, this ward, and and by the way, there are so many people have got to be absolutely ecstatic to be able to see this happening uh, on you know on behalf of uh, right here in in, in in Ward Seven. Not only will uh, DGS uh, headquarters uh, have shops. Uh, Lining uh, well, we got a little work going on. Let's be here and and make sure that we've we've got the uh, the work going on uh, here in Ward Seven uh, and to create the commercial work office spaces that we know is you know going to make this happen and make it happen as quickly as we possibly uh, can so I just want to say frankly thank thank you for all the uh, thank you for all the 
the work uh, going on uh, to achieve what we're doing right here. This is absolutely incredible. Isn't this incredible? It's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I just want to be, I want to be a part of making this happen. Uh, I've, I've been part of Ward 7 my entire life, and uh, I'm glad to be here to be a part of this now. So, are we gonna wait? we're gonna make this happen, right? We're make it happen. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's give another hand to Council Member Vince Gray, the team in the Ward 7 Council Office uh, as well. And we are going to have two final um, speakers. We're going to cut a ribbon, get a tour, and all that good stuff. So now let me welcome um, from Trammell Crow, the Managing Director, Tom Finan. If you didn't know, I was also the balloon guy. <laughs> Listen, what a great day for the District of Columbia. What a great day for Ward 7. What a fabulous day for the folks at the Department of General Services and the Department of Corrections. I didn't know I was speaking today, so no notes, but this is easy. I am grateful to the partners we have that entrusted us to execute on this development. I am grateful for the, all the hard work of the team members, the development design and construction team members, Gil Bain, Perkins Eastman, Moya Design, many others. I'm extremely grateful for the men and women who actually did the hard work to create this lovely building, right? I do primarily government development for my firm across the country for federal groups and groups like yours, state and local. And the best deals are the ones where there is one team and there's no aisle to reach across. And this may be the best example I've had in my career, which is getting a little long, um, of that cooperation. This was one team who got tasked with delivering a building as the pandemic was at its height designing plans on Zoom. I don't know how many times we said, you're on mute, can't hear you, <laughs> speak up, or you're not on mute, stop yelling at your dog. But we got it done. And when we started construction in May of 21, the supply chain was out of whack, the contracting world was out of whack, the employment world was out of whack. Yet I stand here today to tell you we, delivered this on time and on budget. So. so with that, special thanks, sorry, you gotta clap all you want. Uh, special thanks to the team at DGS. I, I sincerely mean what I said, this doesn't work if we don't work together. Tawana, Rashad, Mohammed, Nikki, John, everybody else involved, just a fabulous job of working together and as Rashad is famous for saying, at least with me, teamwork makes the dream work, right? Amen. And Alan Sage from the Goldman Sachs Urban Investment Group. Thank you, everyone. Um, on behalf of the Goldman Sachs Urban Investment Group, we're thrilled to have been able to play a role in this transformative project. We're so excited about seeing the catalytic, catalytic economic development that a project like this, when agencies really commit to bringing economic development to different areas of the city can bring. You know, you've heard a lot about partnership today. You know, really, I want to give a special shout out to our development partners. You heard from Jim at Aslan Capital and from Tom at Trammell Crow. 
When we talk about partnership, it really meant being on Zoom calls in the middle of COVID, not knowing where the world was going and still committing to see this project through. A little bit about the Urban Investment Group. Over our history, we've deployed over $17 billion of capital to underserved neighborhoods around the country. That's included over 12 million square feet of commercial space, but I can honestly say this is one of the most transformative and innovative commercial projects we've seen anywhere. To see the leaders and people of the agency here really vote with their feet and come out to the neighborhood and unlock all of the assets of the northeast part of D.C., it's really, really incredible for us to see, and we're honestly just so honored to be a part of it and to allow our capital to help facilitate the project. So on behalf of everyone, thank you for your partnership. Thank you. Council member, did you want to have a word? Okay, so we'll see the council member at the ribbon cutting. All right, so with that, are we cutting the ribbon? Let's cut the ribbon. Thank you, everybody.